Okay, so we uh, want to talk in this presentation about the power of the still photograph. And this is uh, related to some of the, the stuff that I've already mentioned about just the ability of a still photograph to sort of capture a moment in a way that, for example, video can't. Um, you know, what a photograph does, in essence, is freezes something in time. And so if you get just the exact right moment in time, you can sort of tell an entire story with just one photograph. And part of this is just the idea of, of having that in your mind as you're shooting and sort of thinking about like what are the moments in this story? Like what are the things that I would like to ideally capture that visually would help tell the story? So related to this, uh, I have this quote about capturing a moment. What is a moment? Well, a moment it is exactly what it sounds like, a very short bit of time. But it's a very important bit. It's the instant when an event is crystallized. Visual storytellers must look for moments with their cameras, whether they are shooting video or stills. Moments are crucial to arousing emotion and empathy in the viewer. So, you know, once again, this idea of a singular moment sort of being able to capture emotion, to be able to make people feel something, and to kind of capture the essence of a story. That, ideally, is what a moment can do. So, you might remember this uh, from the game recently, just this last fall, when Michigan lost to Michigan State. I believe Michigan was ahead and there were like three seconds left and all they had to do was punt the ball away and somehow they ended up messing that up and Michigan State scored and, and won. And they basically cut to this guy uh, in the audience, in the crowd, and he became a meme um, because his emotion on his face and the fact that he is obviously wearing the Michigan colors just really captured the moment of that devastating loss. And the Ohio State fans were pretty quick to get on the bandwagon of taking that meme and making it into a Ohio meme. So we can also talk about this concept of moments plus nuance. So the best photographs not only capture a moment, they also lend themselves to extended viewing. And that means that you can look at them for several seconds or even minutes and continue to find nuance in them. Uh, I think, uh, you know, an example of that, you know, perhaps not the greatest example, but at least an example of that is the picture I showed in class of the young girl meeting Hillary Clinton on the campaign trail. So that captured a moment. And you had the girl, you know, widely smiling, just probably as excited as she's been in her life. You sort of had the sort of look of um, surprise or startledness on Hillary's face. And she was holding a cup of coffee and you could see the Secret Ser Service agents there behind her. You know, it, it did both of these things. It captured that immediate moment. But then if you continued looking at the picture, you could continue to sort of see other pieces of nuance and other little details about the picture that really made it great. And so, again, ideally, you know, a photograph can capture a moment, but then it also captures beyond that moment nuance and extended parts of the story that you could spend, you know, minutes looking at. So you should take lots of pictures. I mean, especially in today's world where everything is digital, um, you know, don't be afraid to take a lot of pictures. There's no waste at all because you can just record over your card um, once you get done uh, filling it up with pictures. So take as many pictures as, as you want. Um, this is a George Bernard Shaw quote, a photographer is like a cod which produces a million eggs in order that one may reach maturity. So it's that same idea, except you're not laying eggs, you're taking pictures, and you're hoping that ideally one of them is going to be a great picture. So some examples. Um, this is a dog who is sitting at the grave of his owner who died uh, after some landslides in Brazil. And I'm going to go through these relatively quickly, but 
please feel free to pause and, and ponder these for a bit more if you feel like it. Uh, this is from the 1968 Olympics, the Black Power Salute. Um, this has become an iconic image. And, you know, once again, if you kind of look at that picture for a while, you have an initial moment. And then also as you look at the picture, you sort of see other faces and you start to think about, well, what were other people thinking? And you can kind of read a little bit here about what this guy was thinking, um, if you wanted to. Another very iconic picture, this is John F. Kennedy Jr. Um, standing, the young boy standing in front of his uncle, who is Bobby Kennedy. And this is at John F. Kennedy's uh, funeral as his coffin is moving by. Um, you see Jackie Onassis with the veil standing behind um, John Kennedy Jr. And, you know, again, this is just a picture that you can, you know, it's very iconic because of uh, John, who they called John John, saluting the coffin and the sadness in the faces. And, you know, it's, it's you know, very much an iconic picture that, that captures a moment and also has quite a bit of nuance in it. A dog is reunited with his owner following tsunami in Japan. Nice moment there. This one's pretty cool. This is uh, taken during riots uh, after the Vancouver Canucks lost the Stanley Cup. And, you know, there were these protests going on. And then you have this picture of this couple kissing in the middle of the street. Uh, this is, you know, a very cool picture for a number of reasons, I think. Uh, first of all, notice the depth of field. Uh, notice that the couple is in focus, but essentially everything else is out of focus, which sort of gives them a more sinister look. You know, this guy here in the foreground with the, uh, the uh, shield looks very menacing, as do the people in the background. Um, and then it's also just this juxtaposition between like two people kissing and basically all this violence going on uh, in the in front of them and behind them. A mother comforts her son after a tornado. A man pauses at his son's name on the 9/11 memorial. Once again, um, this is after John F. Kennedy was shot in Dallas. This is on the plane, Air Force One. Um, Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was the vice president, is being sworn in. And you can kind of see his face there, which is certainly not a happy face. That's his wife, Lady Bird, standing just to the left of him in the picture. Um, to the right of him is Jackie Onassis again, and, you know, once again, she was literally sitting there in the limousine when her husband was killed. So, you know, again, this is a very emotional shot. Tiananmen Square, a shot that you have probably all seen, which has uh, been around in both video and still form. This more recently is an immigrant's, uh, a migrant child's dead body off the shores of Turkey, which is sort of one of the first reasons we started talking about the Syrian refugee crisis was this photo. Um, it wasn't the only reason, but this photo, once people saw this photo, it sort of brought the idea of um, refugees and whether we should take them in America into the public discourse. So obviously a very powerful photo. This is from Kent State in 1970s. Um, this is perhaps the most iconic journalistic photo ever taken. Um, this is during the Vietnam War. This is um, during the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995. Firefighter carrying a baby in his arms out of the wreckage. And so these links aren't going to work in the video part here, but I do encourage you to take a look at some of these um, through the presentation, which is uh, on Canvas 
in another place. And then what I have here is this is the perfectly timed photos link. I just thought I would quickly move through some of these because these are pretty funny and you can kind of look at them quickly. This one, the guy looks like he's wearing the Budweiser crown. There, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Looks like he's wearing glasses of the NBC logo. I like that one a lot. Cats are always good for photos. Um, this one I think is for hair. This is not the strongest one, I would not say. This guy kind of captured at the moment he's hitting the water. Another mischievous cat. That's kind of cool. More cats up to their antics. Aww. That one's pretty cool. That's another very cool picture. That's pretty cool too, as is that. So, you know, once again, this is, uh, you know, most of these are more funny than anything, but it does sort of illustrate that idea of capturing a moment. And then I would just recommend that you um, look at this time um, video here, which is linked from the last page in this presentation, um, which uh, basically takes you to a video story of this guy named James Notchway, um, who was a time photographer. And if you just look at this video here that like goes over his career, there's some really cool stuff here about being a photojournalist and about covering wars and other kinds of things. So there you go. There's my presentation.